Mark Ezell. I am the director of the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program. It's a pleasure to be with you here today and with my fellow highway safety advocates to talk about an issue of great importance here in North Carolina, work zone safety. We're all especially excited to have the National Work Zone Memorial displayed for the very first time in North Carolina beginning today, April 13th through the 15th. Now, before we get started, there's a few ground rules for us to uh, think about as we continue with our program. Uh, first, we ask that you please mute yourself, if you would. Uh, we'll take questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, there will be uh, a recording of this public meeting being made during the course of the meeting. And that will be posted on NCDOT's YouTube channel. And you can find that link to the video at ncdot.gov. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the Secretary of the North Carolina Department of Transportation, Eric Boyette. Secretary Boyette, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Mark. As many of you know, North Carolina is the second largest road network in the nation following Texas. We, uh, we go back and forth with our you know, miles of roadway. We have about 80,000 miles of roadway that we maintain. Uh, we try to continue to battle with Texas on who's first, but uh, right now we're currently second. We have about 8 million registered vehicles, uh, North Carolina vehicles uh, in our state. And on any given day, we can have up to 400 work zones, active work zones uh, in our state. Uh, they can go between major projects that we have, roadway projects that can be maintenance and repair of any of our infrastructure, our bridges, roadways. Um, and you know, those that are working on our roadways, we all know are often in harm's way. And it's up to us to make sure that these men and women make it home every, each and every night. Uh, there's two easy things that we can do to make sure they do make it home. Uh, one is slow down. Two is stay alert. And unfortunately, there are 36 names um, on this work zone memorial that Mark mentioned. Our hope is that we add no more names. This memorial gives us the opportunity to remember and honor those who have lost their lives in our work zones. Please join us in our national effort to encourage highway safety and to honor those who have lost their lives. Again, we wanna thank you for partnering with us. Uh, we wanna make sure that we prevent and make work zones better. We prevent more tragedies. And just remember, everyone is responsible for making work zones safer. How can we do that? Don't speed, expect the unexpected. And for those that are working in our work zones, please be safe. Mark, with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for those remarks. I'd now like to turn it to Dave Krahulik. David is the chair of the American Traffic Safety Services Association Foundation. So David, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program for including the American Traffic Safety Services Foundation in this important event. Today, we are going to hear a lot about the importance of observing work zone speed limits and the effects of impaired and distracted driving, all of which have devastating effects on the safety of our roadway workers and the motoring public. I'm here to talk to you about the role our foundation plays in honoring individuals who have lost their lives in the work zone incident and how we support the families of those fallen workers and our work to educate the engineering community and the next generation of drivers. So let me get started. The uh, National Work Zone Memorial honors those who have lost their lives as a result of a work zone incident. This includes roadway workers, motorists, pedestrians, law enforcement officers, public safety officials, and children. There are currently 1,592 names on the memorial, including 36 from the state of North Carolina, all of which who have lost their life in a work zone tragedy. This is a traveling memorial and is currently located at the Welcome Center along Interstate 95 in Northampton County. To family, friends, and co-workers, the memorial provides honor and respect in a very powerful and meaningful way. If you have an opportunity, I would encourage you to visit the memorial while it's in your state. One of our other programs is the Roadway Worker Memorial Scholarship Program. 
This program supports children of fallen workers by providing them a college or post-secondary scholarship. Our board of directors, all of which donate their time and expertise at no charge, interview the applicants and learn their stories and really, really advocate for them through, the, through our process. We just awarded 12 scholarships to students in nine states for the 2021-2022 school year. I feel so fortunate to have the opportunity to get to know these young adults, learn their stories, and see their gratitude. It's truly an unbelievable experience. Now, for younger children, we offer an Experience Camp Travel Scholarship. Experience Camps are a place where children can deal with grief of losing a parent or guardian, can interact with other children, children dealing with similar grief, and get professional counseling. As work zone incidences continue to increase, we at the foundation have added several proactive programs. We have recently created a youth activity uh, book to start educating young children on the importance of work zone safety. This allows us to influence the next generation of drivers. We also have uh, developed the Marty Weed Engineering Scholarship, which was started with a grant from, from Marty Weed. And that scholarship, is for new engineers just getting started in their careers to attend ATSA's annual convention and traffic expo. Here they can take advantage of work zone safety educational sessions and see the latest cutting edge products and systems. We're in the process of developing a module to address work zone safety in the driver education curriculum. Now people often ask me, what is the foundation? And the foundation really is the heart of ATSA. Um, as a recognized 501c3 charity, we support fallen workers, we educate, and we advocate for work zone safety. We're funded through contributions by individuals, companies, and organizations, as well as our fundraising events. If you want to learn more about the foundation or how you can get involved, visit us at foundation.atsa.com. That's foundation.atss.com. Once again, I'd like to thank the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program for sponsoring this uh, important event. Let me leave you with this pledge. If you will agree to obey work zone speed limits, not drive while impaired, and put your devices down while driving through the work zone, we will continue our work to develop new technologies, new devices, and strategies to get you through the work zone in the safest, most efficient manner. And remember, obeying work zone speed limits and putting your phone down is an important piece to safety in the work zone. Now I'll turn it back over to Mark. Thank you, David. We're honored to have the work zone memorial in North Carolina and uh, am impressed with all the proactive work that your foundation does. And now to talk about the contractors who work so closely with NCDOT and who uh, oftentimes are the ones most affected by work zone safety issues. I want to introduce Victor Barber. He's with the Carolinas Associated General Contractors. So Victor, I'm going to turn it over to you. Oh, thank you, Mark, and thank you for the opportunity to speak today about the importance of work zone safety. As Mark says, I am Victor Barber, Director of North Carolina Government Relations and Highway Haven Division for Carolinas Associated General Contractors. Just a little background, Carolinas AGC is a construction trade association made up of 200 contractors and 544 construction related firms that perform work in North and South Carolina primarily. Our members are both small and large general contractors, subcontractors, specialty contractors, material equipment suppliers, and service providers. As you travel across North Carolina, you, you will encounter many of our contractors in the work zones where workers are exposed to the dangers of working adjacent to the traveling public. Just as an example, I-95, where the memorial is located, will have over 34 miles under construction for the next several years, exposing hundreds of workers. As you travel south down I-95, you'll encounter many work zones before you get to the North Carolina border. And this is just one interstate in North Carolina. It's all over the place. There's a lot of construction going on now. As a representative of the construction industry, I can tell you that nothing is more important to us than the safety of our workers. We spend countless hours training our employees on workplace safety and on the proper installation of work zone traffic control devices, as well as the proper maintenance of those devices during construction. More often, our contractors provide vital information on signs well, well in advance of a work zone. Pay attention and don't be distracted. 
you might miss the most important direction that will get you home safely. There's nothing more important to us than to ensure that all our personnel can go home safely to their families every day. Please remember, work zones are our offices. It's where we go to work every day. As you travel the state, please be attentive to the signs. And as you approach work zone, please follow the directions and most importantly, reduce your speed. As you look at the memorial display, the thing that should stick out to all of us is there are way too many names on the wall and that every name represents a family that has lost a loved one. We should all do our part to not have one more name added to that memorial. As a representative of Carolina's Associated General Contractors in North and South Carolina, we're committed to doing our part to make work zones safe. And kind of in closing, I would like to thank the Governor's Highway Safety Program and the North Carolina Department of Transportation for all their hard work in the works and having the work, work zone memorial in North Carolina for the first time, as well as to add to, for, their, for their work in promoting the importance of work zone safety. And finally, I look forward to the day that we can all celebrate when there are, are no more injuries or fatalities in the work zone. Thanks, and with that, I'll turn it over back over to you, Mark. Thank you, Victor, and we thank you for all the great work that you all do. Speaking of great work, one of our, our major partners is the North Carolina State Highway Patrol. Uh, the Governor's Highway Safety Program could not do the work that we try to do without the North Carolina State Highway Patrol, and we thank you. And we're pleased to have with us today uh, Major Daryl Conley, who's in charge of field operations for the North Carolina State Highway Patrol. So, Major, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate the introduction, and you, and you are absolutely right. We have a very uh, long-standing partnership uh, with Governor's Highway Safety and all of our partners that are here. Uh, but as most have already said, one of our biggest resources and the partnership that we continue to ask for is a partnership that we have with our, our motoring public. Uh, the ultimate goal, obviously, is it's already been stated, is for everyone, motorist, workers alike to get to their destination safely and for the road work to be completed uh, in the safe and efficient manner as possible. So as Mark just said, my name is Daryl Conley. I serve as a major in our field operations section for the North Carolina Highway Patrol. And it's certainly a pleasure to be with everyone who's joining us uh, via live stream or who will watch this at a later date. Uh, one of the key missions uh, that the patrol has uh, is working with all of our partners uh, to ensure that we rely on uh, as many assets as we possibly can to see, keep everyone safe in the work zone. When it comes to work zones in North Carolina, the State Highway Patrol and our law enforcement counterparts, we have a primary mission of ensuring uh, by way of awareness, education, and enforcement of clear cut and substantial violations that we keep the work zone safe as possible. One of the biggest things that we see as contributing factors is excessive speed and driving distracted in, rec in uh, work zones that often cause serious accidents and collisions and unfortunately fatalities. According to North Carolina General Statute 20-141 at J2, and I'll quote, a, a highway work zone is the area between the first sign that informs motorists of the existence of a work zone on a highway and the last sign that informs motorists of the end of the work zone, end quote. So it's very important to be mindful and watchful of all the signs and warnings that you see prior to entering a work zone. A person who drives a motor vehicle in a highway work zone at a speed greater than is posted, keep in mind it's the posted speed of the work zone, is set for the work zone is required to pay a penalty in the amount of $250, and that's to include any applicable court cost. Regardless of the cost of any citation, the ultimate price to be paid by someone who loses their life or is seriously injured as a result of a negligent driver is far too great of a consequence. So the partnership that I talked about a minute ago, this is where we all ask your help as the motoring public. It is incumbent upon all of us 
to commit ourselves to practicing safe driving while traveling on North Carolina roadways. If you must travel, and of course we all do, we ask that you please use caution, avoid distractions. Distractions has become one of the biggest single factors in all collisions and particularly fatal collisions. The State Highway Patrol and the North Carolina DOT urge motorists too, and I will give you a few tips, common sense tips, but sometimes it's worth a little reminder. We ask that you stay alert, avoid using mobile phones and other electronic devices such as radios or GPS units while in motion. Take just an extra second if you need to, to pull over, pre-plan your trip, get your GPS coordinates ready. That way you're not distracted if you're driving and encounter a work zone. We ask that you keep a safe distance between you and the vehicles that are in front of you. Following too close is one of the major reasons that we may not have a fatality, but we have what we've all seen as fender benders. And obviously if you're in a work zone, that creates a backlog. Most of the time in the work zones, the shoulders are very narrow or non-existent at all. So the traffic stoppage is a very major concern that we have in work zones. We ask that you obey the posted speed limit and be mindful of speed limit reductions in work zones. As previously stated by the statute, the work zone begins at the first sign of a work zone and the speed limit sign that is posted for that work zone. That is the first point where the speed should already be reduced prior to entering the work zone. So we just ask that you continue to be vigilant as you travel through work zones. We ask that you keep in mind that anything from machinery to pedestrians, obviously our workers who are trying to get the much needed work done can be encountered in work zones. Also lane shifts, uh, it could be a, a work zone that you travel through the day before when you travel through it uh, the next day because of the ongoing work, the lanes could have shifted. So continue to be mindful. So we ask that you prior to traveling, we urge you to pre-plan your trip, uh, have up-to-date information regarding any work zones, any closures, any traffic congestions, and detours. One resource that we encourage our motorists to use is drivenc.gov. I'll say that again, drivenc.gov. It's a very good resource to get information about road closures and any update information uh, that we may have going on in our state about roads and any closures or work zones. So in closing, the North Carolina State Highway Patrol stands ready and committed to share in this collective effort to spread awareness for the safety of our work zones. The National Work Zone Remor Memorial is a very, very humbling reminder of the lives that have been previously lost in work zones. It is our goal here in North Carolina, as well as throughout the nation, to have one day zero fatalities. And we certainly want to get the number of fatalities in our state and all throughout the nation drastically down. And hopefully one day we can realize the goal of zero fatalities. But especially as we share this occasion, we want to focus and put our spotlight on work zone safety. So we thank you for your partnership. And we ask and hope that you all pre-plan your trips and make it safe to your destination. I thank you. And Mark, with that, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Major. We very much appreciate your hard work and your partnership through the years. You know, our goal here is to educate people about work zones and the importance of being safe in work zones. And uh, that's part of why we're doing today's presentation. For the other panelists, if you wouldn't mind now cutting on your cameras, uh, I want to thank you all for your participation. You know, the safest uh, traffic stop, as, as the major mentioned, uh, you know, we are trying to prevent traffic crashes. The safest traffic stop is the one that never has to happen in the first place. And so if we are able to get the message out successfully in North Carolina, then we can prevent these from happening. 
our vision in this state, the vision of the governor, the vision of the secretary, the vision of myself, is that we have v zero traffic fatalities on North Carolina roads. Our vision zero efforts may seem a little pie in the sky, but frankly, we can do it. We've seen it happen with airline passenger crashes. We can see it happen on North Carolina roads. As part of the national effort to encourage highway safety and honor those whose law, who have lost their lives in work zones and their families, we ask that each of you drive safe, work safe, and save lives. Now what I'd like to do is open this up to other participants to see if there are any questions from the audience for our distinguished panelists today. Any questions that you all see? Hey, Jamil, this is Andrew. I'm, I'm trying to hit the all unmute and it still doesn't work. Do you mind just checking, Jamil, for me? So one question, Major, that I know has come up before you mentioned it is, you know, the whole question of speed limits and work zones. People see a speed limit posted at 70 on a highway, and then they may see a work zone uh, uh, speed limit at 40. Uh, the expectation is, of course, that they go 40 miles an hour in that work zone. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Unequivocally, that that is absolutely correct. Uh, Obviously, the reason for the reduction is to try to keep the workers safe as well as the motoring public safe as they travel through the work zone. As we have seen time and time again, in work zones, you have lane shifts. Uh, uh, lanes are, are, are tight. Sometimes there's either limited shoulder or no shoulder. So yes, the reduced speed is for a purpose is to get everyone through the work zone safe as possible and to give you a little more time to react if something should occur. Uh, we talked about machinery or pedestrians possibly coming into the roadway. So yes, sir, you're exactly right. Great, great. And Mr. Krahulik, you said that this memorial will be in Northampton County from, I, I believe it's today until Wednesday, is that correct? That would be correct. And from there, it's going to go to Michigan, which is hosting the National Work Zone Memorial event, National Work Zone event. So um, if you get a chance, go see it. Um, I can't tell you how moving and powerful it is. I think you really have to see it. Um, we often find people traveling hundreds of miles just to see a name on there that uh, maybe it's a loved one, maybe it's a co-worker. Um, but, but if you get a chance, please stop by and, and be safe and look at it. Thank you. Mark, we've got another question from Millie Bailey. Will the information of the children for the scholarships that David mentioned be on your uh, eight, you know, on your website? David, where can we find that? You can find that at the uh, ATSA Foundation website. You can get to that by going to foundation.atsa.com. And all that information is posted there. Excellent. Any other questions or Mr. Secretary, you've been a leader in, in this effort around work zone safety. Any other closing remarks that you've got? No, Mark, I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, we want to reflect on in North Carolina, I think in 2019, if I've got my numbers right, keep me straight, you know, we had over 7,000 crashes in our work zones and over 6,500 um, were injured. Uh, so, as you've heard from all of our panelists, the importance of us paying attention, slowing down, um, is, is the two easiest things we can do to help avoid these in the future. Um, and I just encourage everyone to do that uh, and appreciate our you know, panelists that we've had here today. You, we've got great um, vision here that's going to help us partner together and move forward. Um, I just appreciate everyone's time and appreciate everyone you know, honoring um, you know, the commitment that we all have to reducing our crashes in our work zone. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We appreciate your leadership on, on this and other issues. And thank you all of our panelists for participating in this great event. And uh, we now conclude our event. Thank you very much. Thank you.